Hey, this is Tyler. And I'm Michael. We're from Mini Mansions, and uh, you're watching us on InvyBuddy.com. Uh, you can uh, expect the unexpected, <laughs> as I might say. Like a horror film, it's usually scariest when you don't see the monster. They always hint at it, so the unexpected is usually the, more, the most important thing. But to that point, Michael, please. Thanks, Tyler. Um, you can expect it to be our most uh, upbeat record, I'd say. Um, probably expected to be our most positive, yet s negative and sad record as well. Um, and uh, you can expect from start to finish it to be a journey and a real, we made it that so you listen to it as a record, um, not as a song by song kind of deal. It's not really, that's, that's, that's like other people's choices that, I mean, honestly, we're proud of every song, so that's like a label management business decision. But we get the final say. That's true, we do. Uh, we don't answer to nobody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, we don't care. I mean, it's like, we're, yeah, we're proud of all the songs, so who cares? There are some pretty sick singles on the so, you know. I mean, <laughs> there's definitely humor going on in this band. Uh, and if it wasn't there, it'd be a real bummer. Um, but we like to keep everything a little light and not take ourselves too seriously. Um, but, and yes, that album title is a, literally the start of a joke. Um, and that's what's kind of funny about it. But it's really the opening line to how the rest of the record plays out. Um, I think our friendship wouldn't be the same if I didn't start by pushing him in the back. You know, you know back so much. Uh, We've just been pushing each other and stabbing each other in the back ever since. Well, now we're pushing each other in positive ways. <laughs> right, like, just step out to the ledge, buddy. We're pushing, we're pushing each other in a creative ways. <laughs> that was the reference. Um, it's, I guess, that song. There's a few songs that might be, like, I guess, disco-esque. And that was, that's the closest that, I guess, we get to disco. So it was like, well, let's make, yeah, let's make it be... Uh, Let's try to put us in a, a bar or a club and uh, with very little money and one creative man doing the video. Um, this guy, Liam Lynch. Liam. He is. No, yeah, there's no ZZ Top going on on stage. What we do for video is for video. What we do on stage is for stage. We've done a few. What we've done, th we've done a few. They were like festival, like city festivals. Glasgow, two nights ago, was our first, like, Proper. proper show. Um, proper Glasgow show. Yeah. No, but to your point, we did have to edit out a shot of Mike, did we, I think we edited out a shot of Michael putting a gummy in his mouth because uh, UK like laws around like broadcasting are so strict that it looked it looked like it was insinuating uh, drugs. Remember yeah, the, I mean, it's yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the anyways, a little crude. What's everyone uptight about? You know. It's legal in California, so I guess that's why I will. Well, that song was written as a conversation between man and woman, and uh, uh, lover and uh, soon-to-be ex-lover. Um, so we needed a female voice, of course, and then it was just finding someone that could deliver um, the right tone of the song, and also someone that you trust in enough to to deliver and be like, and give them direction, or no direction, and be like, you got this, right? And she, since she's a friend, we also trust her musical taste. I mean, what she does in her own bands and projects, um, that was necessary. I think if we brought in a stranger that wasn't a friend, it would have been a little bit scary or difficult to be like, you know what we're talking about here, right? And you know what to do. Um, but with her, it wasn't, you really didn't have to say much. She was like, she loved the song, she loves us, we love her. It was just kind of an easy process. And that's, I think, why we chose her. Uh, it was written in Savannah, Georgia. Um, so it was started... This is a great little town, too. It's a great, beautiful town. Here in Georgia. In the south. Beautiful. Bayous. Yeah. I was there for... 
<laughs> I was there for a couple months and like didn't really have much to do and uh, was writing a bunch of songs and kind of wrote this thing. Actually, I take it back. It wasn't Savannah Jordan. It was half written in Savannah Jordan, but the first riff, that first as well as the that was written um, in Dublin. Oh, snap. Bam. Oh. It was written in Dublin at the Olympia Theater. We were doing a sound check and started messing around with that riff and we kind of were like, oh, that's cool. <clears throat> so it kind of stayed and then when I was in Savannah, Georgia, I started piecing the song together and then when I came home, we finished it and Tyler was like, you should do that as a chorus and the thing. And, um, and uh, that's the song. The lyrics come from uh, real life uh, experiences with a, a woman and uh, and uh, bad things. Yeah, that one of the bad good. things that one that made you feel good. Uh, we've been doing it. We've kind of been so every time we get together. It's just that's what it, like it's a vacuum that we've created. And it's, it's a completely natural process for us to navigate what we want to do for many mansions. Yeah. At least for me. When we're together writing or refining or recording or mixing or touring, uh, it's all it's kind of a part of the same world. And I don't think that like uh, maybe I mean stuff that we do outside of that bleeds into it, but there's kind of like a unspoken I don't know, gate that we kind of see what what is what works in that world and what doesn't. And that's kind of the fun process of writing. You must stand at the gate. Yeah. And let your song in. The gate's getting wider. I can It's getting wider or sure. I can't tell. Well, yeah. I think the gate. I think the gate has opened a little bit on this record too. Like we were like, especially like having a drummer play on the whole record, which we've never done before. Yeah. A real drummer, which is John Theodore. Um, as he's touring with us. Yeah, hashtag John Theodore. Hashtag <laughs> Mr. Mr. Theodore. Hashtag handsome. Um, Theo, little Theo. I think opening that door. Um, has expanded our sound and the record and being like, okay, let's not be so precious about like, I have to be on a cocktail kit, we have to do this, we have to do that. We were like, let's just make the record we want to make on this one. And I think also, you never want to do the same thing twice. That gets boring, and that I think makes you be like, yeah, they're okay. But if you keep expanding, keep expanding, at least changing, it keeps things interesting and I think makes the band better in general. Yeah, gives a whole new life. I think for this one, in particular, this record, uh, we have a lot more, I don't, don't want to say characters, but sides that we've extracted, like for certain songs. Um, I think we've kind of like, there's certain songs that we've very consciously used aspects of our voice and like really took it to the nth degree. Whereas, you know, in the past stuff, we just knew what our voices generally were like and we just used it towards the song, but this definitely has, I like to call them characters, but characters within yourself. Uh, and so we kind of like, what do you call it, exposed a lot of that, in a lot, in like a lot more like a uh, conscious way than I think that we've done before. Now it's funner. Yeah. yeah. It's more funner. It's more funner. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's like the voice I'm talking, like this voice right now, it's completely fake. An old keyboard that was haunted? I must have been joking. Unless I was talking about, because when, yeah, maybe. Um, there was this keyboard, there's this keyboard that was basically an old, like, 80s sampler that I called the Magic Machine, and uh, we did a lot of sampling uh, on the Great Contenders. So maybe I was referring to that keyboard. I'm not going to say what it is, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to hype it, because I don't, I want anyone else, uh, you know, blowing up the eBays, but that might be it. But as far as, t to my knowledge, I was probably joking. No, no. we lost it. Yeah, we had, I had the stuffed animals from the monk video for a while, and then I was just like, why are they still accumulating in my garage? You know? No. I kind of actually, I know where it is, but it's like not worth telling you <laughs> anymore. It's very, um, yeah. Yeah, and maybe what I I don't actually don't mind talking about it anymore. Um, I don't know then at the time or what day that was. I might have said that. And I really don't mind talking about it. Uh, yes, it like it twists the knife a little bit, you know. But 
Um, I think maybe at this point in my life, I'm at the age I'm at, you know, comfortable with who I am. I, I don't really, I don't mind talking about it at all. It's really actually, it's actually, it's very cathartic to talk about it. Um, we already put it on the record. That was very cathartic. Now to talk about it, it's just like, I don't care. Why not? It's been enough time. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Can you something? I think so, yeah. Yeah. You'll see. We'll see. Expect the unexpected. As all the greats said, it's feel good. I think it helps most bands because it allows the fans to connect with them in a way that they never had before, and so they can be much. It can be much more of an interactive, um, it's a public, you know, experience. Um, so I think that helps a lot of people, like especially like people that were like, I want to start a band or I want to be like a solo artist. All they have to do is like play a song, videotape it. Um, and then put it on the internet and they can yeah. connect with people without a record label, without marketing money, without anything, and just connect with people. So it's an amazing tool for, for I think it's for us, I think who like kind of are a little stuck or believe in the old school way of doing things. I think it hinders us because we're not willing to do that. We just don't feel comfortable doing it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's wrong to do it. I just don't think we're comfortable. So it's a problem for us because we can't adapt to the new way to well, stop doing things. We just kind of like, well, I'm not going to say, but I just personally feel like there's a kind of nice medium, like a pocket that you can get into where the mythos of what you're doing as an artist or as a band or whatever is still there without overexposing yourself. And I think that like putting this like uh, content is king uh, vibe over everything hinders the experience of, of, of being a band in general. I think over, what do you call it, uh, what people say, like, I'm over explain, uh, over too much TMI. TMI is a real thing. I feel like TMI should be, that version of, T, the version of TMI in my head is, should be applied to Instagram and all those other social places. Don't do uh, it. Yeah, I don't have any advice. That just depends on the person, to be honest. I think uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't listen to what we yeah. did because uh, <laughs> if I was someone that needed advice as, a, as an artist or like a musician, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ask any musician. <laughs> I think, they're all yeah. gonna say something else like it's gonna be hard or like you gotta keep going or maybe you keep going. It's like I don't know. Man. Like some people are just different. I think it's we should, hard. I think we should be getting advice from uh, you know <laughs> from, from kids who like like these people who are just like. They put out one song and then they're like headlining like arenas. And you're like, well, that's all. That's all. Wait, 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 wait. That's you all skipped the, all those steps. Like that's all, all the steps that's that we all, had to go It's through. like you know what they say. It's like ten percent, and I hate that too. It's like they say it's ten percent um, ability and like ninety percent chance, which is kind of absurd because it's true. everything's kind of chance at that point. Anyway. It's true. Like I was saying this, I was saying this about Billie Eilish, who like I think I, I like some of her stuff. I think she's really got a cool thing like going and. I like what she's doing. She's a young girl, and she's pretty badass actually. But I, she, uh, I watched the Coachella, you know, video, and I was like, and she was like self admitting, like, what the fuck am I doing here? This is all too much, too soon. Yeah. And I agree with it. I think it's too much, too soon because she's, it's not her fault. Like it's great for her, but she skipped a bunch of steps, right? So you it's can like, skip. You can skip grades. Yeah. So it's like good for you because now you're at the spot where you're selling lots of tickets, but also. I think she understood that too. She was like, oh fuck, like, I probably haven't gotten in a van. I probably haven't, like, you know, ate shit for years and years to get to this spot. So I think it's a, it's a tricky one, you know? But that's just the way this world is. Unexpected. I don't know. Us. Us, <laughs> us plus Theodore. Uh, well, I came up with a line recently. What is it? Uh, loud and generous. And mysterious. Loud and generous. Us. Uh, we throw, we have like a, <clears throat> we have like a sort of a map of like all the songs that we actually laminated. We pin it against the wall. We had to find another guy for the darts, but he found darts obviously in Scotland. Uh, got the darts, we, you know, every, every before. <laughs> we throw it at this giant board and every, every, like every song that we hit, uh, there is no resemblance to what we're gonna put on the set list. We just like throwing darts at. It. So what? If my answer actually is not why, but how we do it. I must have been trying to question. 
I just like throwing darts at her. <laughs> Songs names and shit, good stuff. I don't know how we decide. I take a shower, he takes a shower, and then like I'm like, and then I text Michael, I'm like, so how are you feeling? That's <laughs> impossible. I don't believe in telepathy. I do actually. Carrie. I love Carrie. Who doesn't? Alright, cool. Everything. <laughs> What's next? Tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully we make it. Hopefully, make it hopefully we'll tomorrow. live till tomorrow. Uh, that'd be nice. And then, uh, it's, we've got a long tour ahead of us. A lot of throwing down music. Our record's coming out. Um, it's all big build up to July 26th. Yeah. Right. Final words. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm really bad at final words. I should be on my gravestone. <laughs> yeah, final words. Peace! <laughs> I don't know. Final words. I, final words is like, you'd have to ask whoever was around one of us when we died. Like, that was his final words. <laughs> so, I don't know what to say.